YouTube, at this point, you know that I do a lot of skincare trials. I've done 28 brands. I need to count how many multi-brands I have done. And usually I kind of feel like, okay, I liked this brand. I liked this brand. This brand was really good. This challenge, however, has been one of my favorites that I've ever done. The backstory on this is that Korean beauty isn't anything new. We're just kind of new to it in America, speaking as an American, but a lot of people have been getting more and more interested in it, looking into the 10-step routine, which to a lot of people sounds like a lot. Even to me, it kind of did sound like a lot, but when I really started to research it, you don't do 10 steps every single time that you are doing your skincare routine. You do whatever you need for that day, for that moment, so it can be between five, six, seven, eight steps, however many that you need at that moment, and up to 10, or up to more from what I've heard. Another principle of Korean skincare is to take time between the steps, and I thought that that was gonna be a little exhausting as well, and it isn't. It isn't at all exhausting. You just start getting ready for the night or for the day, and as you're doing your daily preparations or night preparations, you kind of mix in the skincare steps. I found this not at all tiring, which was surprising and quite frankly, something I really appreciated. But I think the most shocking part of all of this is that this is so much more affordable than so many brands that I've tried with really high quality ingredients. Obviously, we have a ton of drugstore options available to us, but what I love so much about Korean skincare is that the ingredients are all fantastic. One of my criticisms with drugstore skincare that's available in the United States is that there's just not that much that's exciting in it in general in the ingredients, and that was just the exact opposite experience with Korean skincare, and yet the prices were the same, if not lower. So I wanna to talk to you about everything that I tried. I ended up trying 15 different products. Uh, yeah, let me start with talking to you about how this went for me. I went into this with fairly clear skin. My skin has been clear since I figured out my hard water issue that I've talked about in other videos. I made a lot of purchases through Ulta. A lot of this is available in Ulta, and what I couldn't find that I wanted to try in Ulta, I bought from YesStyle.com. I was a little apprehensive about YesStyle, but I heard a lot of good reviews from them, a lot of good experiences. I really used the subreddit Asian Beauty to gain a lot of information and ideas of what to buy. And by the way, the top that I'm wearing is also from Yes Style. They just have so much cute stuff and it's really, really inexpensive. My advice to you if you buy from them is to make sure that you buy only in stock items. I made two orders. One I bought all in stock and it shipped immediately. I had it in two weeks. The other, I bought one item that said it was back ordered. It took six weeks to get that. Now, as I was using these products, I was actually shocked at how quickly I started to see a change in my skin. It started good, it ended better. I gotta start this video with something extra because I'm sometimes extra. So this is a little meme box fleece headband. You can buy these for $6 on Ulta, but the Ram one, you have to get through it. Yes Style, and I needed it because I'm an Aries. This thing is actually amazing. It completely keeps your hair out of your makeup, which is something I've griped about before. I use a lot of thin headbands and wonder why my hair gets in my skincare. This is so thick that it really and truly keeps your hair out of it. It was such a wonderful accessory to use with skincare. Did not think I would be giving a headband a glowing review ever on my channel. Kind of want to wear this for the rest of this video, but I know you won't take me seriously. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, I'm just going to mention this now, if I look a little extra shiny, I know exactly which product it is. You already know, if you watch my channel, I have all of this stuff on my face right now, so that's what's going on. It's easy to cover this with a BB cream and powder, if that's something that bothers you. Okay, let's get into the 10-step skincare routine, and I will review products as I talk about every step. So the first step is makeup removal, and for that you can use either a little makeup wipe if you're short on time, or an oil-based cleanser. Now, this is the Lobotica Green Tea Lip and Eye Point Remover. This is $6 for 30 pads. This is actually the full size. It feels like a travel size because of how small they are. Each one of these is only a very little and tiny pad. 
Apparently what the idea is, is you are supposed to use one of those little pads per eye or for your lips. I personally don't think these are overpriced for what they are. I just think they're very different from what we typically buy in America. We're used to the big wipes. And to get wipes that are made in such a different way, I think a lot of people might think it's a little expensive for what you get, but ultimately, assuming you use three of these for your face, $6 for what is essentially 10 of our American wipes isn't bad. It isn't bad. Did they work? Yeah. Now these are mineral oil based, so I personally would not recommend stopping there. I would use another cleanser afterward. Then we have the Botanic Farm Grain Cleansing Sherbet. This retails for $30 for 3.8 ounces. It's effective, but I will say that I didn't find it as sticky as my personal favorite, which is the Emma Hardy Amazing Face Moringa Cleansing Balm. I talk about it all the time, but it's not bad. It is less expensive. I think it's, I think this product is fairly accessible. I did get this through Ulta. This is not the full size. I got this with a set. It does work really well to remove extra skincare that may be left on your skin or light makeup, but I didn't find it personally comparable to my favorite. I think that if you've never tried that product, you might still like it because it reminds me of other makeup removers that I've tried. I'm just picky with makeup removers. I cannot stand having extra makeup left over. All that said, I will say this did not get in my eyes, so I can't say I had any kind of issues with it. That same Ulta set also came with a sample of the Back to Iceland cleansing water. This retails for $25 for 8.7 ounces. It's basically a micellar water. Again, I think that you can find comparable micellar waters at the drugstore because to me, micellar water isn't too terribly tricky of a concept. But I did notice that a lot of people really liked this in the reviews, and I think that micellar water seems to be one of those types of products where you have to find the one that doesn't break you out. The next step in Korean skincare is a foam cleanser. I find it interesting that there's emphasis placed on a foaming cleanser specifically. The one that I purchased was from Nature Republic. This is the Argan Real Nature Foam Cleanser, and it retails for $8.90. Sometimes the prices of the Korean skincare is a little odd. I'm assuming because of um, the price translations. I have to admit I absolutely loved this cleanser. Now keep in mind that I typically do not like a very gentle cleanser and this is not very gentle. This uses myristic acid in place of sodium lauryl sulfate or sodium lauryl sulfate and it also adds in argan oil to maintain hydration levels. Not convinced of the effectiveness of that because it did feel kind of stripping to the skin but I kind of like that, you know, I don't know if I should or shouldn't. I will say it's not as harsh as some other cleansers that I've tried, and it works so, so well with a Clarisonic or a Foreo. I loved it. I think that rather than buying another Origins Checks and Balances, which this is what this reminded me of, I will probably buy this again because it was $8.90. And that said, even though I'm a little hesitant about it being drying, I can't say I saw any negative side effects from it. My skin was looking amazing. Amazing. So, I, I personally love it. I would recommend it mostly for combination to oily skin. Those of you who are acne prone, I think you might like this a lot. Now the next step is exfoliation. And for that I had the ORG Mineral Peel Face, which also came in that Ulta set. This is the only product I don't love from everything. From everything I tried, this is the only product. Uh, so this is supposed to be a spray peel. It retails for $44 for two ounces. It's kind of cute, I guess, that it comes in a little spray bottle. This product reminds me a lot of Peter Thomas Roth's Firm X Gel, except it's actually missing the ingredient that's in that, which arguably has properties that exfoliate the skin. To me, this is basically a carbomer. That's all I could find in the ingredients that might do anything, which just kind of collects surface residue and pulls it off. So it's not really a true exfoliator, it's a scrub. It's a scrub. For that reason, it's gentle, but I feel like it's a little deceptive in making it seem like it's doing more than it actually does. When you spray this on your face and you kind of wipe it off, you get all these little balls with it. And I read a lot of reviews from people who loved it and were like, I couldn't believe how much dead skin was falling off. That's not, oh, I hate to say it, but that's just not how it works. 
you aren't going to have that much dead skin come off all at once. The product itself is balling up on itself and maybe picking up small amounts of dead skin, but not anywhere near what it seems like. So I guess to me this is the kind of product that just feels a bit deceptive. It looks like it's doing so, so much, but ultimately is it? Honestly, that's one of my pet peeves when we're talking about a skincare product that looks like it's doing so much. It typically ends up with amazing reviews, but then I look at the ingredients and I'm like, there's nothing going on here. So no, I don't recommend this product. The next step is toning. I ended up buying the Skin Food Peach Sake Toner, which retails for $15 for 4.5 ounces, and this also is available through Ulta. I don't think I expected it to look so fancy. This is a glass bottle, and it smells really nice, too. It smells like peaches and sake. They nailed it. So, from what I understand, Skin Food is kind of one of the drugstore Korean brands. But I will say that they did use a lot of natural ingredients in this product, which as I said in the beginning of this video, is something I really appreciated in the Korean skincare I tried. So this does use a blend of peach and sake, which is an interesting formulation since both of those are going to provide antioxidants and be optimal for oily skin. Unfortunately, this product is also very high in denatured alcohol, which not everybody is going to appreciate, as well as additives. It has colors, it has parabens, it has urea. It's not going to be something you'll gravitate towards if you're looking for natural skincare. Now, the thing about it is this product is made for oily skin and alcohol is going to help prevent acne because it naturally fights bacteria, which is a big problem with acne. I don't mind alcohol as a preservative towards the end of the list, but it really is a bit high in this particular product. Did I like using it? Kind of. It did feel a little drying. I can't say I hated it, I can see, in fact, why oily skin types might like it, but I don't think I'm going to buy it again. That was two in a row of products I didn't like, so get ready for this, because I love this product. The next step is Essence. Now we're onto the part of your skincare where you're building it up, so you're going from watery to more solid, well, more moisturizer texture. This is the COSRX Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essence, and apparently this is a bit of a cult product, and I understand why. It's snail mucin. It's 96% snail mucin. I am sure there is some percentage of people, if not a very high percentage of people, who are a little creeped out by this thought. I find it so interesting that when I started looking up the benefits of snail mucin, it felt like I was looking up conspiracy theories. I felt like I was researching JFK. It was very strange. There's a lot of very split opinions on this, and a lot of it seems to be questions about whether it's ethical to use snail mucin. Now, according to COSRX, they say that their snails sit around and they really just collect them ethically. Okay, don't know what everybody does, but that is what they claim, and I can appreciate that. I'm not creeped out by snail at all. I, I find it really hard to be creeped out by it, actually, because we use, we still use carmine, which is crushed beetles. We still use ambergris, which is whale vomit. So yeah, I'm not I, I'm not actually seeing it as that gross to me. I don't know. And just so you know, this doesn't have any kind of a scent to it. It is really quite sticky, but it's not it's not weird to use. Sticky, but not weird to use. Absolutely no scent whatsoever. I mean, if you can detach yourself from thinking about it as snail it's not any different from any other skincare product I've tried. It is a little bit greasy on the skin. I think that's what you might see on my skin today. But all of that said, here's why snail mucin is amazing. Snail mucin naturally contains hyaluronic acid, antioxidants, copper peptides, proteoglycans, glycoprotein enzymes, and it has antimicrobial properties. What that means is that this does so many things all at once. I found it incredibly hydrating, I felt my skin was really, really smooth while I was using it, and it really did clear up my acne. I think this was a big contributing factor to my skin clearing up so well. And bonus point, one of my complaints with many of the other essences I've tried is that I have to take out a cotton pad and end up wasting some of it. This is sticky, you don't waste any of it. I think this is, this is an incredible product. I don't ever want to not be using this. Oh, and get this, $21. $21 for 3.38 ounces. This is amazing. The next step in Korean skincare is to use either a serum or an ampoule. 
I think we're much more familiar with serums in the Western world. An ampule is, what have I used? I've used the Advanced Night Repair ampules, which are those little containers of potent ingredients. That's what an ampule is. And a serum is kind of the same thing, sort of. It's a condensed treatment. Now the one I ended up using is the Hera Oil Serum. Apparently this is a high-end brand in Korea. I did get this through the Yes Style website. Now this retails for $85 for 40 milliliters, so it's still more affordable than our mid-range high-end serums over here. Now what's fascinating about this formula is that this contains a 42% Elong Elong concentration, which is an essential oil with antimicrobial properties that also helps to regulate sebum production. This is fascinating. So basically, this is an oil-based serum for oily skin. When you apply this product, it transforms from feeling kind of like a gel when you first use it to feeling like a water and then feeling like an oil. And the idea behind this is that it will deeply penetrate your skin with the three phases. I'll give it that. It did not feel oily on my skin whatsoever, but it was somehow still very hydrating. I think this is one of the best serums I've tried in a while, specifically for my skin. I'm somebody who is very dry but I struggle with hormonal acne. I have not yet found a serum that actually meets both of those needs. And even though it's $85, it is more than the standard 30 mil that you get, 28 mil that you get in a one ounce American size serum, which in a mid-range to high-end formula is usually around $80. This is amazing. This has a lot of really good reviews when it has reviews, although the reviews were a little hard to find. I wish more people had accessibility to this, but again, it seems it's a little hard to actually find in America. The next step is sheet masks. And I did a whole bunch of sheet masks. Apparently you can do these anywhere from one time a week to 14 times a week, once with every skincare session. Now I did one every single day because I like to challenge myself in these videos and I wanted to see what would happen if I did use a sheet mask every day. So instead of reviewing each of these products individually, I'm going to talk to you about the experience of using sheet masks every day. Was it exhausting? Was it tiring to say, okay, I'm gonna set aside an additional 20 minutes on top of all of these other steps to do a sheet mask. Surprisingly, no. I actually really enjoyed it. I felt like I had a lot more time to myself to read, to relax. In all truth, in general, when I do these skincare trials, I'm constantly reading about the products. I'm constantly reading reviews as I do my routine. I like to apply stuff, sit there and read Sephora reviews. So I felt like I had a lot of time to continue to do that. It was not exhausting at all. I was a little concerned that it was gonna to be too much on my skin, that I was gonna start breaking out. I didn't, I didn't. And just so you guys know, the idea of using a sheet mask is that having a serum underneath a protective film will help to lock it into the skin and prevent the um, evaporation of the beneficial ingredients. Just kind of think of it as sealing everything into your skin rather than putting it on and having it escape away. I will say that in using these masks, I did like some more than others. Some of these masks were a little, not ineffective, but just did a lot less for me. And I hate to admit it, but it did kind of seem to correlate with the price to some extent. This Tony Moly mask has great reviews, but to me, it, it really didn't seem to do that much. I also tried some of these animal print masks or design masks. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna buy any more of them. This one is available on Ulta. This is the Animal Tiger Wrinkle Mask. It's not as cute as you think it's gonna be. It's not. It just kind of droops off your chin, at least on me. I do have a smaller face. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just not as cute as what you may have seen in photos where girls are wearing false eyelashes and lipstick as they apply these. It's just, it looked a little awkward in my opinion and didn't do as much as I wanted it to for six, for six dollars, six dollars, I don't know. This one is a placenta based animal mask. It's the only one that was really quite stinky. I also tried a couple of these charcoal based masks. This one was from Feel Brilliant and then one from Dr. Jart, the poor minimalist. I actually liked them. I was actually quite surprised. I always woke up with very clear skin the next day after using those. I'll go ahead and mention a couple more that I did enjoy. The egg cream mask from Too Cool for School really has a nice smell, very relaxing. The So AE Snail Brightening and Moisture Mask was also quite hydrating. And then I was surprised how much I liked the Leaders What Happened Last Night. That really says it restores radiance. It really does. 
And then this was probably the most unique mask that I tried. This is a new addition to Ulta, the Double Dare OMG mask. It bubbles up so much. Your face will be thick with bubbles. But it is fun to use. Do I think you absolutely need it? No. But is it fun? Yes, yeah, fun. So overall, using sheet masks was a fun experience. I think it's worth trying, and I think the prices on the Korean masks were pretty darn good. The next step is eye cream, and I've said in many other videos that I think buying a separate eye cream is optional, but I'm about to rave so much on this product. This is the Cynic Snail Matrix Eye Cream. Sorry, it's another snail product. Hopefully you're not weirded out by it. If you're not, this is amazing. I did buy this through YesStyle, and apparently it retails for $16.90. Granted, for an ounce. I got this for $6.90, again, for an ounce. In a world of eye creams that frequently retail for $100 for a half ounce, $7 for a full ounce of eye cream? I was skeptical. And this became one of my absolute favorite eye creams that I've tried, compared to all of them. Yes, compared to all of them. I love this. This contains 23% snail mucin, as well as peptides, shea butter, macadamia oil, hyaluronic acid, everything you need in an eye cream. It is very dense, it is very rich, it might be too much for daily use for some people, but for everybody it is a fantastic night eye cream. Oh my gosh, I love this and I cannot believe... Seven dollars? So what you're telling me is that this is essentially three dollars and fifty cents for the same amount that I would happily go to Sephora and pay $40 thinking I'm getting a pretty good deal on an eye cream. This has changed my perspective on eye creams because I've said, as I just said, I've not believed in them. I believe in them if they're $7 for an ounce. Really amazing, unscented, just, it's, this is perfect. This is really, 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 really good. Next up is moisturizer, and I did try two moisturizers. I've gotten into using moisturizers in different sections of my face. Since I do have an area where I'm acne prone and then an area where I'm dry and it's basically flipped from the normal T-zone, it's because it's hormonal. So what I tried is the Innisfree Green Tea Balancing Cream, which I used on my cheeks, and then the Dr. Jart Water Drop Hydrating Moisturizer, which I use on my forehead and neck and even nose. The Innisfree is a little tricky to find. This retails for $19 for 1.69 ounces. So that is also a very fantastic price for moisturizer. I didn't actually think I was going to love it because I typically like a more heavy moisturizer even if I'm trying my best to be careful about where I'm applying my moisturizer. But I did. I actually loved it. This was my favorite moisturizer out of the three in total I'm about to talk about. I think this is a perfect option for combination skin, and it was still surprisingly hydrating, but I did not experience any breakouts while I was using it. Now, the Dr. Jart, I, this is $36 for 3.3 ounces, so honestly, it's pretty affordable as well. But it's very, very lightweight. Now, you have to take me with a grain of salt on this, because out of all of the water-based moisturizers that I've tried, which is the latest trend, I haven't liked any of them. This formula is mostly water, silicone, and glycerin with a little bit of hyaluronic acid thrown in. I don't know, I just feel like it's a little bit of a lackluster formula. I feel that maybe if you have oily skin, you'll like the simplicity of it. It's certainly not the type of moisturizer that's going to leave you looking super oily, unless you combine it with snail mucin. <laughs> But is it that hydrating? Not really. It's not that hydrating. Now again, I'm reviewing this as somebody who has dry skin, who typically likes a heavier moisturizer. I think it's entirely possible that if you have oily skin, you might love this. And it does have good ingredients, but I just, I guess for me, I see no reason to completely shy away from oil and moisturizer, and that seems to be the trend with the water-based moisturizers. So it just, it just leaves me a little confused, basically. Now the last step in Korean skincare is either a night cream at night or a sunscreen during the day. I also saw some of these 10 steps switched up a bit to include a lip treatment. So I ended up buying from YesStyle this duo of the Laneige water sleeping mask and lip sleeping mask. The water sleeping mask retails for $25 for 2.3 ounces. I believe this brand is now available at Target. I like the accessibility of it, but just like the other Laneige moisturizer that I've tried, and also just like the water moisturizer I just talked about, 
I just don't understand it. It doesn't do that much for me. It's, it's got a very basic drugstore formula, aside from it did add hyaluronic acid, but it's just so lightweight. I, if, if I'm using a night cream, I want something to be extra heavy and really make me look completely radiant in the morning. This just kind of felt like I was putting on a sleeping cream for the sake of it being a sleeping cream. So for me, it's just a little bit boring of a night cream. I just want something to do more. So just as I was about to give up on Laneige, I tried the lip sleeping mask. Now this retails for $20 for 0.07 ounces. It is really quite good. This is a very thick and pink lip mask, so it's definitely something that you'll want to use at night. It did remind me a fair bit of the Bite Agave lip masks, although I would say this is a little bit stickier. I loved sleeping in this. My lips really did look fuller and more hydrated by the morning. Now all that said, I still like my Kaplan MD lip mask more, but it's still more expensive. This is a really great product to kind of test the waters and see if something like this makes a big difference. I feel like a lot of people are pretty convinced that they don't need anything more than chapstick, blistex type of products. I would very much argue differently, but it's also kind of hard for me to sit here and tell you, you need this $50 product. It's nice to be able to say, here's a $20 product. I know for a fact you can get this at Sephora. I think you can get it at Target. It's available. All right, guys, that is my thoughts on Korean skincare. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun doing this particular challenge. If you like this video, please do give it a like. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, YouTube.